Welcome to the final episode of Canada's worst driver. For far too long now, the most pathetic motorists in the entire country have been living and learning at our driver rehabilitation center. Five people have already graduated our program, but three dubious drivers still remain. And they are about to endure the most humiliating moment of their entire lives. We're going to make them drive this car through the downtown core of this city, Montreal, Quebec, a town infamous for its aggressive drivers. Montrealers are renowned for speeding, for tailgating, and for showing no sympathy to the Anglophone halfwits who show up here without any clue about the driving culture. For our three final nominees, it's going to be overwhelming especially when you consider that the person who louses up this experience the most will be forever known as Canada's worst driver. We don't want Canada's three worst drivers to get into an accident, so we've slathered the car they'll be driving with blunt warning signs. We're hoping that when other drivers see this thing coming, they'll get well out of the way. Wouldn't you? To find the country's worst driver, we got Canadians to send in their nominations. Our research staff poured through hundreds of videotapes from across the nation and diligently separated the merely awful drivers from the truly abhorrent. Brave camera crews then went out for very non-leisurely cruises with the most dubious 40. Catch this. <laughs> oh my From those terrifying in-car experiences, the absolute bottom of the barrel became obvious. <laughs> and these eight people were named Canada's worst drivers. Seven episodes ago, they drove to the driver rehabilitation center in desperate need of help. So help them we did. It's not a race, Bob! It's not a race! Bob was nominated by his buddy, Rob. I'm not Canada's worst driver. I'm Canada's best driver. When we met Bob, he liked to exact petty revenge by driving violently on the highway. To him, it was all a game called bumper tag. Wanna play bumper tag? Catch this. <laughs> In rehab though, Bob learned just how bad some of the drivers he cuts off actually are. And he understood that scaring them doesn't help anybody. It's like clearing the fog. Like, you know, it just makes a lot more sense now, you know. Bob is not Canada's worst driver. Tatiana was nominated by her mother-in-law, Beth. Why did you make me come here? When we met her, Tatiana couldn't turn left, and she was terrified of speed. But when she simply learned to focus her attention further up the road, her turning came naturally, and speed skills followed. 72! I can drive with 72 between boxes! Tatiana is not Canada's <laughs> worst driver. I did it. Faith Ann was nominated by four different people, including Joanne. When she drove herself to the rehab center, Faith Ann's ego controlled the wheel, resulting in some seriously reckless driving. Not wanting to be passed by Bob while speeding down the highway, she pulled an outrageously dangerous maneuver, straddling the yellow line, forcing Bob onto the soft shoulder. Bob's gonna beat us now. Hope you're happy. But when our experts came down hard on her, Faith Ann's attitude changed. What's going through your mind when you do something like that? And so did her driving. Faith Ann is not Canada's worst driver. David was nominated by his buddy George. David arrived at the rehab center with a nasty habit of making long scrapes on parked cars. <laughs> his high speed steering was bone rattling and he'd rely on his passenger so devoutly it was pitiful. But after 18 challenges and many private tutorials, David showed us some real improvement. He learned to maneuver in tight spaces, and most importantly, he showed us he understands that when he's driving, he's the one in charge. David <laughs> is not Canada's worst driver. Manuel was nominated by his colleague, Alex. When he showed up at the rehab center, we believed Manuel was simply incompetent. I can't get out. What the heck is this? However, his incompetence is anything but simple. This is turning out to be our worst one yet. Oh, no, it is, because it's not easy, Alex. Manuel is a frustrated road rager trapped inside the body of a mild-mannered computer genius. He doesn't want to be too emotional today. 
When he learned to control his emotions behind the wheel, we learned Manuel is not Canada's worst driver. One of these three people is. Heather was nominated as Canada's worst driver by her husband, Ernie. She's afraid to go fast. Okay, now what? She's indecisive. No. And she can only see about 20% as well as most people. With her glasses on. Chris was nominated by his wife, Michelle. When Chris drove to the rehab center on day one, the car was like a foreign object to him. I can't feel the accelerator. Not good. He's short on skills, but that's mostly because he's too afraid of driving to get any good at it. This is impossible. <laughs> it's not impossible. When he does get behind the wheel, he's often completely paralyzed by his own anxiety. I think I pissed myself. Madalena was nominated by her friend, Jennifer. Even in the rehab center, Madalena cares more about fashion than driving safety. She's distracted, she's foolhardy, and she's in total denial. Please graduate me. I promise I won't see. But what makes her possibly the worst driver in the country is that following every accident, she shows zero remorse. Hey, Heather, I won't kill you. At the end of this episode's two final challenges, the unenviable task of choosing which person will be named as Canada's worst driver goes to our crack team of experts. Montreal lies ahead, but first, one more mega challenge. It's the culmination of everything we've taught our students. We're testing handling skills, spatial awareness, split-second decision-making, observation, and anticipation. All the skills every driver needs to stay safe. Behind me, construction workers are putting the finishing touches on the most cunning challenge we've ever created. This will be the final exam ever to be held here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. It's a long and winding challenge designed to be so frustrating that many of our pupils might overheat and even totally seize up. With good reason. After all, a bad performance today could result in a lifetime of humility and red-faced shame. For the biggest challenge of their driving career, we broke the biggest car out of our lot. This course is wider than we make most of them because we're hoping they go fast. We're trying to prepare them for this trip to Montreal. After the opening straightaway gets their hearts pumping, they'll have to calm down enough to make it through this tight squeeze. Then they have to get up to 60 kilometers an hour while driving between a hallway of hay bales. At the end of the straightaway, an emergency stop is mandatory. Then it's time to reverse. Ramping up the pressure will be our beeping, beeping road rager. Reversing this car while being pursued makes me kind of feel like I'm in a 1970s crime series. Go backwards at a rate of knots. Driving forward is the same as driving backward. Look where you're going and you'll be fine. Next, it's a tightly measured U-turn through an intimidating hallway of obstacles while still going backward. Slip into a parking spot, turn the wheels hard left, and head forward to thread the eye of the needle. Staying between these boxes, drivers once again have to reach a minimum speed of 60. As they advance, the gaps between the boxes shrink. My adrenaline is surging. The next part of the course tests how well the drivers understand the relationship between momentum and friction. Or in layman's terms, we're gonna see if they can make it through a mud hole. I made it through, did I? Come on, stay going, you. On the last straightaway, there's a door prize no one wants. If they hit that, they're in deep trouble. And a puddle that could sink someone. Big water hazard, woohoo! Bit of hydroplaning action on the left side. Come around the thing, our road rager is back. And now, run the final little eye of the needle to me. To end this course, they must come to a complete stop with their bumper touching my leg, but breaking no bones. And that was the final exam. First up for the final exam, Madalena. In her real life, everybody around her knows Madalena is a horrible driver. Everybody's like, oh my god, that's the girl that hit the great Canadian bagel. But she's still in total denial. I don't think I'm Canada's worst driver. Absolutely not. We're trying to teach her what it means to be responsible for a ton of steel. But we're not getting through. Oh my god, stop it! And she's belittling us with hollow promises. If I can graduate, I swear! 
swear to God, I'll get a bus pass and I'll never drive again. So, this one's for all the marbles. Okay. Starting the final exam, Madalena promises to care and drive responsibly. But we've heard that before. Get on my side. Oops, sorry, sorry. Get on my side. <laughs> Get on my side. <laughs> Up to Go. 60 and break at the last possible hay bale. Go. Madalena Go. almost Go. hit 70. Oh and the cop cars. Going backwards, she creates more mayhem and loves every minute of it. What are you doing? Straight down. <laughs> After 20 whole meters of accident-free driving, Madalena clobbers an obstacle. <laughs> but instead of becoming contrite, her bizarre sense of entitlement kicks into high gear. Now the woman who once drove through a bagel shop window is hitting things and running over the rubble as if it's her right to make an expensive mess. Remember, Madalena, you gotta get up to 60 while you're threading the eye of the needle. We're gonna call you back, okay? Okay. Go, 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 go. Pop. Press it, press it, press it, press it. Down, 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 down. Ah! You just me. Madalena is acting juvenile. If she drives like this on public roads, someone could get killed. Amazing. Our cameraman narrowly avoids being run over, but it's Madalena who takes it in stride. Sorry, Frankie. I didn't mean to. <laughs> oh my God. Coming to the finish line, Madalena seems quite satisfied to have set the bar extremely low. Are you ready to go driving through the streets of downtown Montreal? Can we go shopping? You can do whatever you want as long as you don't crash. Okay. Our experts think Madalena needs to keep her mind on the business of driving. Do you ever get nervous about your exams? Mm -hmm. How do you act when you get nervous? Do you laugh when you're sitting in the, in the auditorium writing an exam? No. Okay. You're doing the final exam. Yes. You're hitting signposts, uh, crates, uh, rims, and you're laughing. And I'm concerned for your welfare. Okay. I feel like I'm talking to a girl that's in grade nine who is unwilling to take any responsibility. And so that's why I'm so annoyed because I'm thinking, I know she can do this. And yet she continuously does things to show us that she can't. You need to grow up. You know, I think that's my biggest thing is that you just act like you're 14. Can our other two motorists possibly do any worse than Madalena? Well, of course they can. They are Canada's worst drivers. The three most negligible motorists in the country are taking their final exam here at the Driver Rehabilitation Centre. When the results from this challenge and from their upcoming drive in Montreal get scrutinized by our experts at the end of this show, we will reveal the identity of Canada's worst driver. Heather's next. Heather's not what you'd call a fast driver. When I was saying keep going, keep going, you were braking. And one of the reasons for that is as clear as fog. Her eyesight is seriously substandard. So that is 2100. Back in the middle. Heather's a drifter. You missed. She's a hitter. And she's a person who hates this big green monster of a car. For her final exam, Heather has her game face on. Here we go, Heather, for real. Go! Heather's taking no prisoners. Yeah, except Ernie. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Coming through the parked cars, she bounces like a pinball. Why won't these people stop hitting stationary objects? No, floor it. You gotta get up to 60. Heather makes it up to speed and has a fine emergency stop. But all of the excitement has her spooked and confused. Look out, she's reversing in the wrong direction. Good Samaritan Scott Marshall gets out of his car to show Heather the way. Then Scott gets back in his car and becomes an inconsiderate road rager. Heather knows Scott is play acting, but the stress builds regardless. Instead of stopping to regroup, Heather just drives. Without a clear vision of how to handle this course, Heather breaks free from its constraints and sees that she's lost. Okay, this has gone on long enough. 
I clear a path through the rubble and try to guide Heather back on course. When it comes to reversing, Heather has a lot of baggage. She doesn't seem to understand that when she goes backwards, the front of her car still exists. All right, Heather, you can do this. You're going to go up to 60 as you're on the needle, too, OK? Up to 60. And where do I go? Where Heather does go and where Heather's supposed to go are often very different. At least she made it up to speed. Now you have to turn this corner. That's excellent, Heather. You made it. 61. Turn hard and spin the wheel. It's hard to maintain momentum when you keep slamming into thousand pound hay bales. Straighten out. Quick, 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 quick. Where do I go to the end? Straight through these bales here. Now I have to give it up speed again? Yeah. No. All you have to do here is drive safe. Before this final exam started, our experts told me to remain positive no matter how badly the students drive. What a mess. What a mess. Hop out, though. <laughs> but you got up to speed. This is what I'm really proud of you for. So long it took you to really nail the gas, but this time, twice, no problem. I can do it. I have a bit more confidence. And I think that's what I'm lacking. One thing her husband is not lacking is hatred for the Grand Marquis. <laughs> do I get to wreck this now? Not yet. Oh, come on. Maybe we'll see if we convince you to get the, the producers to let you guys wreck it when we're done. I hate that car. Last and quite possibly least, it's Chris. The graduate at the end of every episode has always been the person who has demonstrated the most improvement. Chris has never fit that description within the confines of a single show. Oh, that was bad. But overall, he's definitely our most improved driver. I'm not saying he's good. I'm saying that when he arrived here, he didn't have a single clue. And then... Oh, look oh. at him. Have you been looking at your mirrors at all? Uh, no. Go! Chris starts his final exam clearly focused. Focused on what? I have no idea. He hits the first set of obstacles in his path. And let's not forget, Heather and Madalena already widened this section. Now to speed. Chris has displayed several disturbing character traits during his time with us. The most disappointing is that sometimes, when he's doing quite well, one mishap will totally freak him out. I just turned the wheel oh. totally the wrong way. Just hang on to your neck. <laughs> then he gets angry, which leads to panic. Damn it, I keep on drifting. Sometimes his ineptitude snowballs like a runaway train on a fast track to hell. If Chris doesn't come back to Earth, he's going to be the worst of the worst on this course. And tonight, we're not picking the most improved. We're naming the worst. Going forwards again, Chris gets the car up to 60, but can't for the life of him get it back down to zero. That's been the ugliest bit of driving so far. And now it's time for the mud hole. All in all, though, through here, Chris does fairly well. He swings into the final shoot with dramatic flair. He steers clear of all the cameramen, and he slides through cleanly until he brutally hip checks ugh, that hay bale. Whoa. That hip Whoa. check killed the car. Car died. No, no, the car didn't die. It was murdered. Son of a motherless goat. Just stop the car. Put it on the park. OK. Put it in the park. When Chris gets out, He's got a very bad taste in his mouth. That sucked. It did indeed. But you started so well. I guess. And once you got thrown, then you were lost, eh? I got thrown, and then nothing was in position. Chris can't have a meltdown like that in Montreal. Honestly, like, looking at the video, it seemed like that after a few things hadn't gone right, you gave up. I hadn't seen it quite at that level ever before. It's sort of like your hands went off the wheel. You were exasperated, and you were kind of disgusted with yourself. So I think that is a real serious problem that you need to work on. At some point, you've got to be able to suck it up and say, OK, I made a mistake. Clean the slate. Let's start over. I sure hope our drivers smarten up by the time they get to Montreal, because on their final big city test, I've agreed to ride shotgun.
Montreal traffic has no time for bad drivers. To make sure they're not completely in the dark about big city motoring, Scott takes Canada's worst drivers out for a private lesson around the cobblestone streets of Old Montreal. There's horses, there's French signs, and there's millions of moving objects. There's a belief held in the rest of the country that pedestrians don't exist in Montreal because they'd be mown down by the drivers. <laughs> Au contraire, pedestrians are everywhere, and Scott can't point that out enough to Madalena. What do you think about these pedestrians? I don't know. Go slowly and cautiously. Madalena's focus, though, is on shopping. What are we approaching right here? Uh, the Chakra Center. Cartier. When you're driving, forget about your shopping. Okay. When you're driving, it's, hey, I have a task, I'm a driver. For Heather's lesson, Scott's main concern is still for the pedestrians. The danger of someone stepping by so we can help it. Nice response to the pedestrians. Old Montreal has none of the tunnels and freeways that Canadians think of when they imagine driving in this city. The fastest moving road on our test will be Saint-Denis, where the drivers might get up to 70. And the most unfamiliar terrain will be these annoying cobblestones. Scott gives all three of our drivers a lesson on the unique rules of Montreal. For example, you can never turn right on a red light, and a green arrow like this means you can only go straight forward. It's a lot for Chris to absorb. So what did you learn? Uh, that I don't really want to do that again. Why? There's just way too claustrophobic, and there's too many pedestrians. I don't know what they're doing. Tomorrow, for their final challenge, our nominees for Canada's worst driver will spend at least 45 minutes behind the wheel during rush hour traffic. I'll be in the passenger seat acting as navigator, reading out the directions. In the morning, Madalena sheepishly announces that she partied hard last night. She thinks that sort of behavior just before an exam is pretty cool. However, she thinks our car is an embarrassment. This is the car? That's the car. Why do you think I was being so embarrassed? Huh? Okay. Where am I going? You're going to go in the driver's seat because you're the one driving this final challenge. Madalena has had several serious accidents and dozens of unreported fender benders. Here we go. Drive us through Montreal. I've been worried about this day for a long time. Now it's happening. But everybody's staring at you. I <laughs> think you're crazy. <laughs> the Driver Rehabilitation Center has done wonders for our students, but there is one strange side effect. Now, whenever they see rows of pylons, they feel compelled to drive between them. On what should be her third turn, Madalena spaces out and drives straight. Renee Levesque. Okay, we're going to go on a little detour. Okay. Madalena loops around some pedestrians and heads back into traffic. Before long, she's faced with a green arrow. Okay, that was an illegal moving violation. You're not allowed to make a right turn on a straight ahead arrow in Quebec. Uh -huh. Madalena's hangover has kicked in hard. I'm gonna throw up. And driving round and round in circles is not helping. Did I pass it? You did, you passed it. It was the, the immediate lift. Oh, okay, we're gonna go in another circle. Okay. We're all over the place. Madalena's first destination is Mount Royal. She needs to go left, but for some reason, she veers right. Go for a little drive again. Okay. Madalena has been on a lot of these little drives in her life. Eventually, she's back on the road to Mount Royal. Madalena approaches another left turn. And just like last time, she panics at the last minute and swerves off to the right. Oh boy. So you're in the left turning lane to go on Camille and Oud, and then for some reason you got out of it just before you made the turn. I think I need glasses. Oh, is that right? Because I honestly can't read these French signs. Ultimately, you're going to go into the next roundabout that you come to? You know what a roundabout is? No. It's a merry-go-round for cars. Aren't we on one? It's a difference between going around in circles and being on a roundabout, though. If you came to an intersection which had four large arrows pointing to the left and a big do not enter sign looming to the right, would you need to come to a dead stop in the middle of the road to figure out what to do? Go straight. And would you then go the wrong way? No, let's not go straight. No, wait. Madalena sees the do not enter sign and flees accordingly. Idea. I'm feeling nauseous, but I'm not nearly as green as Madalena. Rod, if you're going to hurl, hurl over the... 
defense. You guys really that sick? Yeah, and like I'm gonna I throw feel up. really yeah, I feel really nauseous right now. I have to get out of this car. Very classy. Instead of sleeping before the drive, Madalena passes out during it. I don't feel so good. I don't think Mad's feeling so well either. We had a little bit too much to drink last night. And it's really hot in the car. I'm gonna puke. Okay, I guess I gotta get back in the car with Mad. I'm just glad there's only three of these to do because I am getting very scared. Despite our best efforts, Mad obviously doesn't care about safety. Matt, you gotta start watching speed signs, okay? There was a big sign there that said go into that turn at 35 kilometers an hour and you hit it at 60. Madalena needs much more than a nap to straighten herself out. Back in the city, she misses yet another turn. Okay, Matt, you really gotta start paying attention. That was Duluth right there. But she has no problem spotting her favorite stores. Jen, this is where we were shopping yesterday. Cool. This next move could buy Madalena an expensive ticket. Okay, this is extremely illegal, man. You are not allowed to take a right turn on a red light. Okay? Why? It was red, red, red. Madalena's in denial, and Jen is indisposed. Still with us, Jen? Mm-hmm. Taking a nap? Mm-hmm. I'm at the end of my rope with these two. This is our last. Yeah. We're on the last 30 feet. Madalena's done, and she seems pretty smug. I'm not smug. I'm pissed. What happened out there? Missed some streets, and then I had to go around in circles. Because you're not paying attention, because you don't care. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Don't say I don't care. I well, care. Then, OK, when you showed up yesterday for a driving lesson on how to survive the streets of Montreal, and yes. you don't pay attention, to me, that says you don't care. OK, I don't know what you want to say, really. I just don't know. I want you to take ownership of your own behavior okay. behind the wheel is what I want. I did. Okay, I accept all responsibility for all wrong turns. Now you're just trying to make me crazy. So I want you to see if you can behave properly behind I the can. wheel, responsibly. I want to okay. see if you can change your ways before you kill someone. I think that's a little harsh to say. How do you want me to put it? You don't have to say because I'm going to kill someone. Okay, well, I, so I want you to start behaving properly so you don't drive through another bagel shop window. <laughs> well, I know it's not funny. That's the whole point. When we come back, Chris and Heather both take their crack at conquering Montreal and avoiding the title of Canada's worst driver. We've brought Canada's three most dreadful motorists here to Montreal for their final ever driving test. Who will succeed and who will be forever known as Canada's worst driver? Heather's next. If it all goes smoothly, she'll be driving 19 kilometers while taking 28 turns. But I doubt it's going to go smoothly. And we're off. Whoa, Heather. Whoa. Not an auspicious start. So be super careful, my dear. We're all good. So you're going to turn right onto this one. This is St. Paul. Be careful of the pedestrians and everything, of course. Heather's eyesight will be her biggest hurdle on this drive. I'll tell her what streets to look for, but I won't point out the signs. No metal on metal, Heather. No, no metal on metal. Pedestrians are wary of Montreal traffic, but they're especially wary of this absurd automobile. Our defense mechanism is working. People look out for Heather as much as Heather looks out for them. You're fine. You don't need to look at the front of your car. You can look straight down the road. Think, you're, think of what Scott Marshall would tell you. So you're fine. Aside from the jerky start, Heather is driving very well. Stiffly and methodically, but correctly. She even signals and turns around a double parked car while checking her blind spot. You're doing great so far. You got a big green light, and you got a lot of pedestrians waiting. Aren't they nice? Aren't they nice? Several episodes ago, we showed Heather some standard road signs, and she only knew what 20% of them meant. So, it's not surprising she's already forgotten what a green arrow means in Montreal. And that's illegal. Now I'm getting nervous. Then Heather defies my expectations and manages this tricky merging maneuver. Like a pro. In the back seat, Ernie has been speechless for quite a while now. Your next instruction is to go right on Saint Denis. Rolling forward, Ernie pipes up. Red light, Heather. Okay, I'm not going now. Heather's forgetting you can't turn right on a red light here. Okay, Heather, you gotta listen to your husband. That was a red light that oh, you just turned right on. Light, yes, right? ma'am, that's a very illegal oh, oh. moving violation in this part of the world. Heather's next turn is a left. 
She can't read the sign coming, but she does see a turn, so she cuts off an SUV. When she realizes it's not her turn, she swerves back out to the right. And then to the left. <laughs> I got scared. Heather survives the streets of Montreal, and more importantly, the streets of Montreal survive Heather. <sighs> Nothing to it. Oh. Come here. <laughs> Don't hold your head. Oh. <laughs> You've never ever driven in a city this big? No. And? <laughs> well, it's not as bad as I thought it was. I think I could probably do it again. Want to? No. <laughs> Heather knows her limitations, which is some help behind the wheel, but not much. Is she Canada's worst driver? Chris is next. So Chris, this is our chariot. We're going to drive around the streets of old Montreal. If this course gets done exactly properly, it'll take about 45 or 50 minutes. First instruction is to take a right on St. Paul. This is pretty much a sensory overload for Chris. Before arriving at the rehab center, Chris had never sat behind the wheel of a car two days in a row. Now, he's finally into the rhythm of driving, but Montreal has a beat all of its own. Okay, buddy, I was patient. After a little stutter, Chris settles down. Even when he comes across other bad drivers, wow. he keeps his cool. That's a piece of creative driving, I think I did. I'm loving that. Chris is confidently keeping up with big city traffic. And he's staying calm around pedestrians. I'm going to make an observation. Yes. After eight weeks in the driver's rehabilitation center, you seem more comfortable here in Montreal during rush hour than you did on an obstacle course all alone when you first got to the rehab center. True. That is true? True. You're more comfortable here in rush hour. We're headed up Mount Royal now, and the next turn is a left. Whoa. Time. It's not the smoothest ride ever, but Chris gets us up to the lookout without missing a single turn. There's been no moving violations and no freakouts. Wow. You know what, to be honest, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised. He's doing very... Well, he's not doing very well, but he's compared to the rest of the bad drivers, he's doing very well. I didn't hit anything, which is good. Pulling back out into the thick of things, Chris shows us how far his reversing has come since that time he was stuck for 45 minutes in a simple driveway. He looks like the poster boy for stress, but his driving is error-free. Good move. That is correct. Your next instruction is to turn right on Saint-Denis. All right. But that's his left blinker. Does Chris know where he's going? That's right. You're waiting. Okay, your instruction there was to go right on Saint-Denis, so you went left. Chris turns onto a four-lane thoroughfare, heading in the wrong direction. Irrationally, he decides the best way to get back is to turn left into the oncoming traffic. This is going to be tricky. But to keep traffic flowing, left turns aren't allowed on Saint-Denis. You've gone about two kilometers past where you had to turn back. Now. After eight no-turning signs in a row, Chris suddenly realizes he should turn right. Well, not good. <clears throat> yeah, you might want to check your blind spot before you start making the turn. Yeah. Especially oh, that was a cop. cop. Especially into a cop. <sighs> By the time San Denis sort of peters out, Chris still hasn't turned. Well, this doesn't look very smart either. Instead of pulling a quick U-turn, Chris goes in to explore. Where is this going? This is going into a bus turnaround. Oh, well, is there a bus following me? No, there isn't. Oh, but there's a giant do not enter sign that says, oh. unless you're a bus, don't come in here that you just drove on. Oh. All Chris has to do now is go straight ahead through the turnaround. But he opts for a three-point turn, which could lead to a showdown. Oh. OK, that was curious. Why, why would you do that, baby? Probably should have followed around, seeing as this is one way, and here comes a bus. Okay, get ready for excitement. Undaunted, Chris hits the gas, while my anxiety levels hit an all-time high. I might not have done it that way. Chris pulls over to regroup. He's clearly in the danger zone. The street I just turned off of, mm -hmm. which is, which was Saint-Denis. What? And then... And then just continue past Mont Royal, where I was supposed to make that right. The breather works. Chris calms down enough to drive us back to the street where it all went so horribly wrong. Okay, back on track. 
Michelle sees an orange light and tries to warn Chris. <coughs> but Chris is missing all the signs. Okay, man, you're blowing a red light. You just blew through a red light. Oh, crap. Yeah, that's not good, Chris. I'm not supposed to let the driver smell my fear, but I stink at concealing it. There's a street sign. Where is it? Come on. Then Chris misses another turn. Well, ho hopefully that wasn't that it. Was it that ah. was it. To get back on track, he senselessly pulls into a hospital parking lot. You know that the street you were just on is a one-way. Hey, you're going to just go back onto it the same oh, way. Oh, that's right. You're Which brings us to our second head-to-head -head showdown with a bus. I seem to have this thing with buses today. Uh -huh. Well, that was certainly pointless. Ah. Uh. When Chris gets to his final turn, he cuts off a driver who gestures at us. Sorry. I don't think he's saying that Chris is number one. If I have to pretend like I'm not afraid for much longer, I'm going to explode. Those checker flags are for you, sir. Pull right Chris in. started out well, then something just snapped. I'm ready for a beer and a taxi, and Michelle doesn't know whether to laugh or cry. I'm pleasantly surprised with the things that he has really learned and taken to heart. He's done very well. Um, the rest of them are still pretty frightening. Thank you very much, Chris. Congratulations. We made it home alive. All right. <laughs> that a wrap? Not a chance. The final judgment is still to come. After the break, we will name Canada's worst driver. Our team of experts has been holed up here in the Driver Rehabilitation Center for the last eight episodes. Tonight, their final task will be choosing which of our three remaining drivers is Canada's worst. Well, it's been kind of interesting every time we've sequestered ourselves like this to figure out who we're going to graduate, but today it's an especially big deal because the person who doesn't graduate is Canada's worst driver. Well, I, I don't know that second and third place are necessarily <laughs> something to be that proud of. And uh, I have to say that given that this was their final series of challenges, it's all three of them making the same mistakes they made uh, in the very first episode. And Chris gives out so completely, so utterly. Like, this was with the final exam, too. He just kind of give, you know, puts up his hands. Yeah. And you can just see the sense of failure and the sense of utter, like, hopelessness. Which is a nice segue into Heather, because she also made some fairly egregious errors in Montreal, but she seemed to be able to recover. Right now, Madalena's not at the position where she can recognize that even if she has bad influence, she needs to still make correct decisions. I gave all the candidates lessons in driving in old Montreal and wanted to get Madalena's eyes further ahead and make early decisions. I said, what do you see well ahead? She pointed out two stores that had sales. In Chris's defense, I'll say that I think with him it's an experience issue more than anything else. We've always talked about driving being attitude, awareness, and ability. Heather has the best uh, attitude yep. and probably no worse than tied for worst uh, in terms of pure ability. Uh, Madeleine has the, probably the best eyesight, best vision, but she's got by far the worst attitude. And Chris has no awareness whatsoever and not much ability, but his attitude too is a little better. So we've got, you know, them, they're all bad for different reasons. Tough choice. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to figure this out. All three are horrible drivers. But now we need to whittle it down to two. This hunk of junk trophy is made up of just a few of the perfectly good car parts that were destroyed this semester at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. In just a few short moments, I'm going to shackle this piece of hardware to the soul of Canada's worst driver. But before I hand out the goods, let me just say this. Three of you people have made dramatic improvements since getting here, but what happened in Montreal was simply inexcusable. Madalena, you showed up for your final road test without even bothering to learn what the traffic lights in Quebec mean. Not too bright. And Chris, you almost sideswiped a uniformed police officer man in an unmarked car, and luckily though, you were driving a vehicle so ridiculous that he was too embarrassed to pull you over. Heather, when you did your final exam here at the rehab center, you ran into half of what you could see and more of what you couldn't. 
So imagine how surprised I was when you pulled into the streets of Montreal and you didn't hit anything. Heather, look me. I'm gonna give you back your keys. If you promise, okay, and you have to promise this, never to drive in a strange city again, and you are gonna get your eyes tested as soon as you go home, aren't you? Yes, I am. Then you graduate. Congratulations, my dear. Heather's reached the end of the road at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. Before she came here, Heather was writing off one car every two years. And while she was here, she continued to hit a lot of things. She wasn't great at going forwards, and she was worse at going backwards. But bless her heart, she always gave 100%. Heather, be careful out there, and let us send you on your way with one last piece of advice. If ever you can go forward, go forward. Try not to back up. Two people remain. Which one is Canada's worst driver? We're about to name Canada's worst driver. In the all-important final two challenges, the performances were abysmal. Here at the rehab center, Chris sent an orange marker flying five meters into the air. And Madalena sent a cameraman running for his life. In Montreal, both drivers fell asleep at the wheel. Chris figuratively, and Madalena literally. They both ran red lights, they both got repeatedly lost, and they both needlessly cut people off. Which one is Canada's worst driver? It's crunch time. Who is Canada's worst driver? Chris, we gave you classroom lessons, we gave you in-car lessons, we taught you every way we know how, but still, when you go out onto the public roads, it's clear as a bell that you don't have a clue how to drive. Madalena, you could become a half-decent driver, but I really don't think you have the will. Every single day you were here, we offered you professional driving lessons, but you took us up on that offer one lousy time. The fact that you don't care is as plain as the scratches that run up and down your car. So, it's come to this. We made our final decision based on the last two road tests. In the first of those two tests, here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center, Chris, you are easily the worst. And Madalena, in Montreal, Chris was also easily the worst. So I'm sorry, but here's what's going to happen. Madalena, I'm going to give you back your keys. I'm not going to graduate you, but I am going to say that you're free to go. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh. Chris, buddy, <laughs> I'm really sorry, but you will recognize this as your key. <laughs> And I'm not going to give it back to you. Oh, well, that's okay. I'm going to leave it right there. And now it is my duty to say, you <laughs> are Canada's worst driver. Come on, buddy. I'll walk you out of here. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Hi, honey. It's me. How are you? That's good. Guess who you're talking to? Canada's worst driver. Stop laughing. Canada has one million kilometers of roads, and Canada's worst drivers are back on them. In the six months since this series was filmed, Madalena has become the proud owner of a flashy BMW. Is that smoke coming from my car? I would like to thank the Ministry of Transportation for issuing me licenses. I'd like to thank my parents for buying me a car and never really getting mad at me when I hit stuff. Heather picked up new glasses with a new prescription. I think you missed that stop sign. Uh oh It would be a relief to go home and not uh, have to say that I'm kind of this worst driver. I think Ernie would have been disappointed too. <laughs> oh! Chris. And Chris, well, he's done a little bit of city driving. Be good boy, stay. But he's still far too terrified to venture back onto the highway. Chris Ferguson, Canada's worst driver, but a great sport. Stop laughing. <laughs>